Welcome back YouTube, I have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and today Google just released Android 11 Developer Preview 4. You may be wondering what is Android 11 Developer Preview 4 because Android 11 timeline shared earlier by Google only state three developer previews and the first beta should arrive in May. But because of the current situation we have with COVID-19, Google pushed the first beta to June and added one extra developer preview, which is developer preview 4 to the original timeline. Line. And that will give more time to developers to test their apps on Android 11. And as you see, the update is downloaded now on my Pixel 3 XL and it's waiting the restart. And as you see, the update size is 221 megabytes and the build number is RPP4.24.09.015. So now let's start restart the phone and apply the update and see what's new with Android 11 Developer Preview 4. But before getting started, let's make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. So the first change I'm going to show you here is related to the recent apps screen. And one more time, Google is still changing the recent apps screen since the release of Developer Preview 3. They removed the most frequent apps from the bottom and they replaced it with the screenshot and share buttons. But I found a lot of feedback against this new design. However, they continued to apply the same design, but adding one more button, which is called Select. When you tap on Select, First thing it will do, it will hide all the recent apps from the screen, so you cannot swipe between your apps, and it will highlight all the text it can possibly read on this application card, so you can quickly copy, search, or share it. So this is something not new, and we already have this feature for ages on Android 10, uh, and we used to tap and hold on the text and select whatever we want, but now Google is trying to make it more obvious by adding uh, a dedicated button for achieving the same thing. Uh, and it also works with photos. As you see here, I can highlight the photo and then share it quickly. Uh, and that was always the case with Android 10. Uh, if you have the Photos app open, you can share a photo from the application straight away if you want. Uh, the only change here is just to give you a hint that you can do this nothing really different here. One more change in the recent apps screen. It's not actually a change, but it's a step back from the previous developer preview. If you remember in developer preview three, if you closed an app by mistake, you can quickly swipe left and right or swipe down to get it back quickly. But it seems that this option is no longer available. I tried it many times and it's not happening. So I hope Google will apply this feature one more time because that was one of the things that I did like in Android 11, but maybe they are trying to enhance the feature and we will see it back again in the future updates. So let's wait and see what's gonna happen with Android 11. The next change I'm gonna show you is related to the Styles and Wallpapers application. When you go to Styles and Wallpapers and then go to Style and then create a new style, here you have the same fonts, the same icons, the same colors, but you will get two new sh icon shapes uh, added to the list. You have this uh, hexagon shape and you have this uh, shape that looks like a flower. I don't know what it's called, but I don't think that any of them will look any good to me and I will never try to use any of them. Now let's talk about notifications and as you saw with the previous developer previews of Android 10, Google is working really hard to enhance the notifications of Android 11 and that's also the case with the developer preview 4. If you remember in one of the developer previews we got this new profile picture that appears in the status bar if you set your conversation as important and that's exactly the same with the developer preview 4 but with other changes. And the first change here when you expand your notifications shade you will get this small orange circle with the application icon inside to let you know which application is sending you the message. And secondly, when you tap and hold on the notification to change the settings, now you get a totally different menu. First, we used to have two buttons here, one to set your conversation as important and the other one to swap between silent and alerting notifications. Those two buttons are now gone and got replaced with the settings button that takes you straight away to your notification settings. Now in the middle, the options are also different. So now you have an option called priority, which is exactly the same as important. And you have the alerting and silent options too. 
Uh, if you tap on any of the options, you will see this little animation that expands the choice and explain to you how this will impact your notification. Also, a lot of options have been taken away from this menu. We used to have Remind Me, uh, Bubbles, and Add to Home Screen, but they no longer exist and got replaced with those three options only. And when you go to Settings, you will see the same new design here. Uh, those three options used to be uh, switches like the bubbles. However, they are now matching the new design we saw in the notification shade. And if you take a look at the bottom, let me zoom out a little bit. And you see here now a new section called advanced. It doesn't include any new features. However, uh, you have uh, things organized a little bit different now. So those are the basic options. And if you want to uh, or more options, you can tap on advanced to change even more settings for this conversation. And other than this, everything works exactly the same as the previous developer preview. Now let's talk about the screen recorder. And I know a lot of you are waiting for a fully functional screen recorder in Android instead of using third party apps. And the option is still there. And the most important question I get in the comments all the time, does it record internal audio? And the answer for this is no. It's only recording audio from the mic and even with the developer preview 4, it's still the same thing happening, nothing different here. Now let's check what's new under settings. And the first change I found here is under the Wi-Fi. When you go to Wi-Fi and for example, you are connected to any network and tap on the settings icon. Now you have a new option called disconnect. Uh, in Android 10, you only have forget or share, but now you have a new option called disconnect. And on top of this, a new option here called Auto Connect has been added to the Wi-Fi preferences. And this option, uh, you can turn it on or off. And if it's off, it will not automatically connect to this network. So you can set it separately per network. But previously, we only had the option under Wi-Fi preferences that says turn on Wi-Fi automatically. And that will turn on your Wi-Fi regardless what type of network you are nearby if this network is saved and you connected to it before it will automatically turn on your wi-fi uh, but in android 11 you can now set that separately by turning off the auto connect option and it doesn't connect unless you do that yourself another change here is under connected devices when you go to connected devices and then connection preferences now you see a new option called android auto and when you tap on it it will take you straight away to your android auto application settings Previously, to do the same thing, you have to open the application first and then tap the hamburger menu and then choose settings and it will take you here. But now it's a lot easier, a lot less steps you need to do. Just to jump to settings, connected devices and then go to Android Auto. Another change here, if you go to apps and notifications and go to any application and tap on permissions, now you see a new option called remove permissions if app isn't used, which means it will automatically revoke all the permissions already provided to the application if you didn't use it for a certain time. But it doesn't say here for how long exactly, it says here for a few months. So it doesn't really say for how long, but it will automatically revoke all the permissions you gave previously to the app if you didn't use it for some time. Now let's take a look at some of the changes under the lock screen settings. And I have here my Pixel 4 XL on Android 10 and Pixel 3 XL at, on Android 11. And if you go to display on both devices and then go to the lock screen, the first change you will see here, it's, it's called here lock screen display while here it's called lock screen. And when you go inside, you will see also a lot of differences in the naming of things. So for example, here it says notifications on lock screen and here it says lock screen. They do pretty much the same thing, but the names are different. And also another name change here, it's called add text on lock screen, while here it's called lock screen message. And both of them do exactly the same thing. And one final name change here, it says always show time and info. And uh, that's exactly the same thing as always on, on Android 10. So on Android 10, you have always on. And here you have it always show time and info. Another change here is under the sound menu. And when you go to sound, even if you are not connected to any device, you still have the play media 2 option. And when you tap on it, now you have 
the phone speaker instead of this device. Previously, the option is called this device. And also they added the uh, volume slider so you can quickly change it from here. Uh, even if the Bluetooth device you have is not connected, it will give you the name of it. And between parentheses, you have the word disconnected. So that's a slight change. It doesn't impact the functionality. And the same change took place when you go to the same uh, volume menu from the volume rockers you will see the same change here another minor visual change here is related to the power key menu when you press and hold on the power key you see now the screen is a lot dimmer and the power key menu pops out more and if you compare that to android 10 as you see here the screen is not as dim as on android 11 even with both of them set to the uh, light theme you see the power menu now pops out more on android 11 which makes it easier for you to see and also when you tap away from the power key menu it fades out slower so you see the animation is now different and again if we're going to compare that with android 10 it goes away much quicker so let me show you this so it goes away a lot quicker than Android 11. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the changes I managed to get my hands on with Android 11 Developer Preview 4. And in case you've spotted any new changes, please let me know in the comments. And if I found anything important, I will definitely do a follow-up video for this. Beside the changes I showed you in this video, there are other bug fixes and improvements. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description to see the full list of those improvements. So I hope you like my video. And if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more more videos. Thank you for watching.